Bokitov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And this morning, uh, WikiLeaks, uh, Julian Assange, does he end up going to prison? It seems like it should be Hillary Clinton in prison, along with the scores of others uh, in the United States. But instead, it looks like Julian Assange is going to be the very one that will be in prison. The uh, WikiLeaks founder, who has been held up in the Ecuadorian embassy uh, in, in London, is apparently uh, will lose his asylum. This video this morning, I'm going to share this with you, appeared RT posted this on Rupley's uh, on their um, video channel there. They are actually taking out furniture from the Ecuadorian embassy and some believe that this furniture may be used, uh, may have been used by Julian Assange while he was held up inside the embassy and so now they're beginning to remove these things from the embassy uh, and of course in, in making way for his arrest by London authorities. Now my question is going to be are they going to try to sneak him out at night? Are they going to try to take him to where he cannot be seen whatsoever, that would really be the lowest blow that they could possibly do against uh, Julian Assange. I mean, he has truly been a hero for uh, freedom of speech. There are many, though, that are saying that uh, his acts are criminal because he has released uh, private emails of uh, political figures across the spectrum, especially in the United States. Uh, uh, it says here on RT, Ecuadorian president to hand Assange over to UK during a London visit in Greenwald. And of course, protesters outside, uh, outside saying Assange safe passage, uh, free Assange. Uh, on both sides of this particular uh, statement there. Very troubling, and I'm sure U.S. authorities, especially those that really hate this man, cannot wait to get their hands on him. And whether or not he'll end up being tortured or, or any of those type things there still remains to be seen. And I'm sure they're going, that may still be the one thing that comes because they're going to want to get the information out of him and try to stop these leaks because he is the one man that knows how the leaks are, are, are done, how they're able to access this information and then publish it. Uh, so that's something that they're wanting to put a stop to because those leaks continue to, to be ongoing. And, um, uh, but nonetheless, uh, oh, by the way, before I get into the, their website there, uh, the Ecuadorian president is on a visit to the UK. He'll be coming in today, just today being July 22nd, 2018. Uh, it's not an official visit, but he has to be speaking uh, at, a, at a particular gathering there. It says here the Ecuadorian president, Lenin Marino, is either about to strike or has already struck an agreement with the British authorities on withdrawing the asylum protection of the WikiLeaks founder, Julian Assange, Glenn Greenwald reports. Marino is visiting the UK as a part of his European trip between July 22nd and 28th. His visit is not said to be an official one. He is not expected to meet with any high-ranking UK officials and would instead participate in a global disability summit on July 24th and co-hosted by the UK government. That's what his actual purpose is uh, there for. But nonetheless, as we reported the other day, the IMF, uh, uh, there, his country is seeking a loan and it has been said that the U.S. will hold up his ability to get this money unless Julian Assange is released. So... Once again, uh, money plays the factor in uh, who is willing to uh, squeal on the next guy. And it seems like Ecuador is willing to release him as a result. You know, but we asked the question, you know, you're putting Assange in prison. Why are, not, why are you not putting Hillary in prison? Because after all, uh, the United States does exactly what Julian Assange was doing. They do it on a regular basis. Uh, this is exactly uh, what they're doing to Americans every day. They are listening in to everything you say. They are invading your privacy uh, on a daily basis, reading your emails, listening to your uh, or look, reading your text and tweets and private messages, listening to your phone calls uh, on an ongoing basis, all in the name of national security. Well, maybe Julian Assange was also doing this as a private uh, company there, doing the same thing that the Americans are doing, but letting the Americans know what the government officials are doing instead. So, you know, a uh, pot can't call kettle black. The man did exactly what the government does on a continual basis, and it's done all across the globe. Israel as well, deeply involved, 
and using this type of technology to spy on anybody and everybody, and that's considered okay. And even if they spy on US political figures, etc., that's okay. But Julian Assange is not allowed to do it, and neither is Russia allowed to do it. I guess that's where it really comes down to, because even in his WikiLeaks, they do complain about Russia meddling in the election. So there probably is some truth in regards to that. This is some interesting tweets that have just come out. November 5th through the 6th leaks they put up here. Hillary to Colin Powell, proof of intent to hide her emails. Uh, you'd have to read the PDF on that one there. Uh, the Dine Corp employees, hi, employees hire a 15-year-old boy to strip dance for them. Hillary Clinton covers it up because she receives money from the Dine Corp. Says the other issues. Let me blow these up because I want you guys to be able to see this as well. Uh, and I'm not thinking about the fact in advance that it's a little bit difficult to read. Uh, <clears throat> now, it uh, says right here, the other issue that surfaced at the time was a colossal error in judgment by one of the contractor's employees in the hiring of an adolescent boy dancer for some sort of event that at least two most folks uh, looked very inappropriate. The post in a now looking at the dancing boy, which was not included in the April 17th article. Uh, you know, very, very sinister evil that goes on uh, with these people here. So Hillary directed her maid to, point, uh, to print out classified material on several occasions. That's another thing that's being leaked right now. Please ask Marina to print for me in AM. Uh, we can ask Marina to print this. Revisions to the Iran points. Marina is trying to print for you. Uh, the, the different uh, uh, messages go back and forth, and Marina is her actual maid there. So we have DNC gives CNN's Wolf Blitzer questions to interview Trump. Trump questions for CNN. Wolf Blitzer is interviewing Trump on Tuesday ahead of his foreign policy address on Wednesday. CNN said interview was canceled as of now, but we'll keep the questions for the next one. CNN is looking for the questions. Please send some topical interest ones. Maybe a couple on uh Farina, someone please take point and send them all together by 3 p.m. Thank you. This is the list uh, uh, Brinster, uh, Sarge, and came up, uh, came up with. Wow. It's kind of nice to know that you have the media in your back pocket. Hmm. Well, it doesn't work that way with Israeli News Live. We just report what we see, and we try to stay very neutral in our reporting, and but very honest and candid, which you're going to see in this report today, because we're going to be discussing a couple of different issues when it comes to Israel, both on the side of Israel and also uh, those things that we see that the Israeli government does that is completely wrong. Uh, it also says that Bernie did not keep the agreement at DNC, has leverage over him. Well, I won't say the first word on here. Let me make this even bigger. You guys need to see it because there's some words I just do not feel comfortable saying there. You know, the F word, Joe claiming the system is rigged uh, partly against him. We need to complain to their producer. Hmm. Well, he knows it's rigged, right? The DNC decides to push Russia Trump narrative back in April. Just talk to Jackie, apparently, because we're talking about sexual harassment, the defamation risk is really high. But he hasn't been lit, uh, lit, 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 litigious yet. So, and they go on, we don't have a ton of signs, uh, seems, but the pro-Russian stuff ties in pretty well to the idea that Trump is too friendly with Putin weak on Russia. We are we, Putin weak on Russia. Interesting. See, they got to look strong. Chelsea Clinton used her foundation charity money for her wedding. The investigation into her getting paid for campaign using foundation resources for her wedding and life for uh, decade taxes on money from her parents. I hope that you will speak to her and end this once we go down this road. Mm, trying to cover up things. Hillary's lawyers didn't want her to run because of the damning emails. It says here, do we actually know who told Hillary she could use a private email? And has that person been drawn and accorded? Like whole thing is effing insane. At least we know now, at least, excuse me, at least we now know why Cheryl didn't want her to run. 
it just really gets interesting. We go into a whole bunch of these here, but uh, let's look here. We got November 4 leaks here. Obama may have vetoed legislation in effort to torpedo Bernie's campaign. Let's see what it says. I can promise you that if President Obama signs this terrible legislation that blatantly violates Bernie's entire campaign message, this will give Bernie a huge boost. Signing this bill will result in adding at least another month or more money, more of money and attention to Sanders' campaign. You know, these are the type of things that are going back and forth. Spirit cooking. Oh, I'm sure that's one that uh, make a lot of people interested, especially in light of the fact that we have President Trump with so many religious leaders around him. Uh, and Hillary, though, you know, she has the demonic leaders around her. And of course, Trump has the evangelicals around him. Hmm. Wait till you come to Orlando. You might find out something about that as well. I am so looking forward to the spirit cooking dinner at my place. Do you think you will be able to let me know if your brother is joining? Are you in New York? Thursday, July 9th, Marina wants you to come to dinner, Mary. Uh, Dear John, I am sorry, but I will not be able to make it since I am in Australia for two big projects and will be back on the July 6th. I would like to take this opportunity to invite you to a dinner on July 9th at my place together with Tony, whom I am already invited. But nonetheless, it is a spirit cooking dinner. Jeez. Very, very troubling indeed. But after all, there are emails that were leaked by WikiLeaks that clearly you would have thought that she'd be the one in prison. Nonetheless, the very man that is doing exactly what the, uh, <laughs> the evil of our own government is doing, uh, you'd think he'd be a hero. But no, he's exposing those emails of the elite. And you can't do that. Mr. Assange, I'm very sorry for you, and I do pray that somewhere along the way justice will be served and you will be released, uh, because this is a this is a very terrible situation. Turning into other news, uh, right now we find out, and it has been confirmed. I found this in German news uh, yesterday. Uh, it was actually tweeted by um, uh, Amichai Stein. Uh, from Israel. He had found it himself and shared that with us there on Twitter. Uh, he is an is uh, Israeli journalist uh, that said that it was a German paper, and I did translate the German paper. It was actually the Israelis that did, in fact, help give the safe pas passage of the 800 White Helmets and their families from Syria to Jordan. Uh, RT is reporting that as well right now. I want to just kind of give you a little glimpse of the article here. It says, Israel has evacuated some 800 members of the controversial Western-backed White Helmets from Syria to Jordan to be resettled later in the UK, Canada, and Germany, according to the statements from Tel Aviv and Amman. Uh, Emmanuel Nashron, a foreign ministry spokesman, had confirmed on Twitter that Israel has completed a humanitarian effort to rescue members of the Syrian civil organization, the White Helmets, and their families. He chose not to disclose further details, adding only that the evacuees have been brought to a neighboring country. You know, that is terrible. And I, I'm not, listen, you have to understand, I am not against the fact that they have to be rescued. They are, after all, in my opinion, war criminals, but, uh, uh, you know, their families ne not necessarily are the criminals themselves. You know, anyone as a human being deserves the ability to, 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 to uh, fairness, you might say. But in the case, the fact that Israel would get involved themselves, the Jordanians should have settled this uh, with Syria and giving them safe passage. Uh, the Syrian government, though, I'm sure would have loved to have captured some of these white helmets because, after all, the white helmets have been the biggest propaganda piece used by the West. They have also been involved in using chemical weapons against the Syrian people. And I don't think that the white helmets feared the government as much as they feared the Syrian people of reprisals uh, if they were to get a hold of them, because after all, they were using them in staged videos. They were, uh, they were a part of the terrorist organization that would put the Syrians in cages so that when the Russian and Syrian government would be bombing those areas, they would be killed and they would use those people as, uh, as their propaganda piece. These were the type of 
images and things that were coming out of um, the Middle East from different reporters, honorable reporters there that were showing just how sinister this group actually was. And it's a group that is very much backed by the U.S. and the State Department. And to see that Israel uh, gets involved in rescuing them and taking them to Jordan only shows complicity of Israel uh, with the propaganda of the U.S. and what they have done with the White Helmets. That's what's really, really troubling to me. Uh, on another note, though, uh, i got to stand up for uh, the Israelis on this particular one here. And it, again, it kind of shows, uh, you know, the situation of what's going on now. In this video here that you're going to see, you see one person laying down on the sidewalk here to begin with. This is something that's not pointed out at all in the, uh, the video that we're about to watch here. But there is a man laying down on the sidewalk. Now, the, the, the video that is brought out, uh, and this is one of uh, the people that we follow on, uh, that, who is a Turkish man. He had translated this tweet here. In Israel, a group of Israelis attempted to crush a Palestinian woman by a car and attacked with, uh, attacked with a chair. All right. Now, I'm not saying that the woman that you're going to see here is not disgruntled from maybe something that has happened to her already. You know, maybe she had family members killed by the Israeli forces. I'm not sure what's going on. I don't know her story. I don't know her side of the story here. In here. All right. First off, I need you to notice what's going on here. They, the vid, everyone is saying that you know it's it's unreal. They say she's angry. They do say that, and I agree. She's angry. And there's like I said, there we don't know the reason for why she is angry, but they say that Israelis are trying to crush her with a car. All right. But first, notice at the bottom of your screen, you got this guy right here laying here on the ground already. All right. She's right here. She is running around. Now watch what happens here real quick at the very bottom of your screen. All right, you don't see it, but just a minute. The guy is kicking around on the ground. Something has happened to this man. All right. Then we're going to go a little further. All right. Notice that guy, he's just running from this woman. Why would a man run from a woman? You have to first ask yourself that question. Why? She's coming. Now watch the car. The car... The car hits her, but the car also breaks. The car is not trying to really crush her, but it seems that the driver is trying to knock her off balance uh, as she comes forward there. Then you have the guy with the chair. Okay? So, watch what happens now. All right, she comes back at him. All right, right there. Right there. I'll stop the video. We blew the video up to as high of quality as what we could. You cannot tell... Uh, you can't tell with, an, with complete certainty, but when she raises her arm up like this here, it appears to be, and I blew this up to about 400%, he's got a chair, that she has some sort of weapon in her hand, probably a knife or scissors because we see the other man that's laying on the ground there already. So it's like she's taken out one guy, now she's coming up ready for another strike. But this guy has a chair. Now it makes sense though why the chair. The chair would give you some bit of a safety from the knife itself. But the other guys do not have chairs. So they're all running from the woman. So in some instances, she would have already been shot and killed. Because many of the Israelis are already armed. And perhaps even the guy here may be armed. I can't quite tell what's on his side here in the, in the video. But he may be armed. But I think they don't want to kill the woman. So instead, they take her down with a chair. Now... That's at, and I don't know, I would looked at it originally at like 11 seconds into the video. All right, but he does take, he pushes her with the chair. He you can still see the chair. If you back up just a touch here, where is it at? Let me get this at the right spot. Uh, all right, now the other guy is coming with a chair as well, but he'll throw his chair off. They've got her down on the ground. Now... 
they say the woman was beaten very badly and she may have been beaten i'm not saying that she wasn't and i don't agree with that once you have a person disarmed you've got them down they you know you arrest the person you deal with the situation in a in a proper judgment and i don't agree with the idea of military court judgment either in israel against the palestinian people they need to have the right representation all right this is totally wrong there but she's on the ground i don't see at this point here and I've looked at this very closely. Uh, from everything that I can see on this, I don't see any, any part where she's being kicked or anything like that. And I've seen that many, many, many times. I don't see that there. So if she was beaten later, uh, that's what some of the claims are there. It may have been afterwards down at the prison or whatever the case may be. Um, and she is bumped by the car, so she may have bruises as a result of being bumped by the car. But again, it's not, and I have seen ramming attacks. I have seen Palestinians hit by cars going at full speed and intentionally swerving into Palestinians. So there is wrong things being done uh, that's totally not right. And I'm talking about just, I saw in one particular video, uh, an Israeli that ran, ran over a mother and child walking down uh, the edge of the street there, just going around the edge of a car there, and then the car turn and swerve and run the woman and her child over. Um, very serious situation, but in this case here, the, the driver appears to only try to knock her off balance, hopefully that, that they can subdue her in this way here, uh, and it doesn't appear to be anything other than that. So. You know, this is more that this is more like Israelis should act. You know, you're dealing with a situation, and they're not trying to kill the woman. No one is trying to shoot her and take her out, but they're trying to find a way to stop her. Uh, and again, at the very beginning of the video, when you look here, there is a man down on the street already. He's kicking around when the video first starts. Uh, so maybe she did stab the first guy there, and she's going after others. Uh, in most cases, if it had been a man Palestinian, they would have shot and killed him. Uh, but with it being a woman, they're trying to disarm the woman and, and to, to do that. So, like again, you know, when I first saw the video, I was horrified. I couldn't believe that uh, you know, Israelis would try to crush a woman with a car and why they were doing this to this woman because she was angry. But then I began to really examine the video and see what was going on. And that's what we try to do with each and every case so that we can... Uh, uh, make better judgments because you're not there. You don't know what's really happening. Uh, and with all the shouting and stuff, I understand Hebrew, but with all the shouting, you can't really tell what every word is being said there because everybody's talking at the same time. Um, moving on in other news as well, this here coming up from the Arabic news here, this is breaking news uh, in Syria. Uh, they have just broke the news here uh, the, uh, this afternoon on uh, the 22nd of July at 5.26 p.m. The Syrian government has raised the Syrian flag at Quenetra after seven years of civil war. Quenetra now is back under uh, Syrian hands. Quenetra, by the way, friends, is you see many times we post the videos there in Syria, uh, the war videos that we have ourselves. Quenetra is the very little town, the little province there, right there on the border of Israel in the Golan Heights there. So the Syrian government has taken this place back. Uh, and uh, contrary to some of the people's fears, the Syrian government is not trying to enter into Israel, into the Golan there, uh, but they have taken back the land that they have uh, since, uh, since 1967. Uh, moving on to one other issue, uh, Israeli soldier killed by Iranian made rifle on Gaza front according to IDF investigations. Uh, I think this is more of a reason they're going to use to try to go after Iran. Uh, the Israeli government is building a case against the Iranian government. And I have to agree, the Iranian government is a very bad government, you know, but their issues are their issues. But, you know, there are, there's a lot of evil that happens to the Iranian people as a result. Um, women are pretty much considered like cattle in Iran. Uh, there's not any freedoms. There was a one time, there was an Iranian government at one time where women were very much free, much like the Syrian government has now. Uh, but uh, they're, they're wanting to topple the government there, and I think this is one of the reasons. But anyway, there was a uh, Staff Sergeant Aviv Levy was killed 
uh, by uh, Hamas terrorists that was shooting a rifle using a armor-piercing rounds uh, that, according to the Israeli uh, IDF, after the investigation, concluded that the weapon was at, indeed from an Iranian-made weapon. Uh, they say the Iranian gun is a replica of the Austrian steer rifle that can penetrate ceramic vest, and that's exactly what happened to this IDF soldier. He was killed by uh, the Hamas terrorists there. Uh, and and that's after a long period of time of uh, Palestinians, uh, Gazans, that were actually shot and killed there on the border or wounded by IDF soldiers for their protests near the fence. And of course then as it went from a not so much of a violent protest but more of a peaceful protest within just in days it began to turn the opposite way because of all of the people that were shot and, and some killed by IDF soldiers for even protesting near the fence, then it did turn the opposite way. And Hamas got involved in, as well. Then we begin to have the, the, the Molotov cocktails coming over the fence, etc. Uh, but you know, I still I am troubled though that, that Israel used as much force in the very beginning as they did over a Molotov cocktail. Uh, rockets firing into Israel, that's a different issue. But uh, you know, Israel could have put a stop to this, I think, sooner had they wanted to. Uh, very troubling situation, no matter which way you see there. Also, peaceful uh, multicultural societies don't exist, according to Dutch foreign minister says in an explosive leaked speech there. I actually listened to his speech there, and it is explosive for many, but yet I can't help but understand the way the man feels. Uh, I disagree with him because in the United States, uh, we had slavery, we have black people that live in America that are fully Americans to begin with, uh, but you know, but because of our past, you know, of the slavery that came into the country, uh, you know, in fact, America is nothing but a multicultural nation, uh, and there is coexistence in America. We have everybody, whether it be uh, European, West, East European, Russian, uh, you know, Eastern people, Philippines, Chinese, Japanese, you know, African Americans that were descended from Africa, etc., uh, Muslims from the Middle East, you name it, we have it all in America, and we do have a coexistence. It is possible. But I have to understand, too, in the case of the Dutch uh, foreign minister, it is a shock on the society because what is happening in Europe uh, with the refugees that came in from the Syrian civil war is a mass migration and a culture shock for the uh, Western European nations. And a lot of the Eastern European nations refuse to allow this to happen. Uh, it's almost as if this has been set up intentionally though, and that's what concerns me. It looks like this has been set up intentionally what's happening in Europe because during a world war, which is something they're planning by 2020, they are wanting to take and decimate Western Europe. Uh, Eastern Europe they're not as much worried about, but there is a definite plan to destroy Germany, London, France, all these countries here in the West, the Netherlands, etc. They are wanting to destroy these countries completely. Uh, and I guess because the East European bloc is still more like the communist uh, days, not that the East Europeans are communists by no means, but uh, they're still, the people are still fresh from communism, and maybe this is what they're planning on doing with all of Europe. After all, it seems that the Vatican really uh, prefers communism over democracy. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Book it off.